Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at elimination entries specifically that deals with depreciable fixed asset transaction. In the prior session we looked at non-depreciable fixed asset. Depreciable is a little bit challenging than non-depreciable because you have a deep depreciation to deal with. Now bear in mind before we proceed I would like to remind you this lecture is designed for CPA candidate. So this is basically a review although I explain although I do examples but nevertheless I believe I give you an overview if you are interested in more detail so for example if you're taking this course from a an accounting perspective course like advanced accounting please go to farhatlectures.com matter of fact if you want to if you want to download the slides and work multiple choice you have to go to farhatlectures.com but the point is if you want more please visit my advanced accounting course so depreciable fixed asset well depreciable means what it means the asset is depreciated in contrast to land so we're not talking about land anymore we're talking about equipment we're talking about machinery we're talking about furniture computers so on and so forth so when an asset is exchanged between two companies having parent subsidiary relationship the carrying value of the asset in the consolidated financial statement so when we prepare the consolidated financial statement the book value the carrying value should equal to the original value that would have been reported of the selling company so if the parent company sold it to the sub when we prepare the consolidated financial statement the original book value or the cost minus accumulated depreciation should appear in the consolidated as if the sale did not occur what does that mean it means also that any gain or loss resulting from the intercompany transaction is also eliminated. So we have to basically restore the original cost and we have to eliminate any gain or loss. In fact, it's considered to be realized from the use of the asset which reflected by the yearly depreciation adjustment. So part of that gain will be realized, but we'll see how later on in a journal entry through the depreciation adjustment. Okay. We will see in the following example that assets cost, accumulated depreciation, and depreciation account are usually subject to adjustment for the purpose of consolidation. And don't worry, we'll work an example illustrating this concept. Let's take a look at this example. On January 1st, X4, Company A sold the machine for 720000 to Company B. We're going to assume for this example, Company B is the parent company. The machine had a net book value of 625000 and that's a result of the difference of a million in cost and accumulated depreciation of 375. Company A, which is the sub, acquired the machine at the beginning of the year and is depreciating it using the straight line method of depreciate with a depreciation with an estimated useful life of eight years and no salvage value. And Company B accounted for the machine using the same assumptions. Now prepare the eliminating entries required for the consolidation purpose. Well, let's kind of think about what we need to do. Well, this transaction consists of an upstream sale because we're gonna assume company A is the sub and company B is the parent. Now we're, we're selling, A is selling to B. It's an upstream sale. However, given that A is, given that A is a wholly owned by B, no controlling interest is involved. Simply put, we're going to assume there's a 100% relationship between the two. Therefore, we don't have to worry about non-controlling interest. Now, if you want to learn about non-controlling interest, this is where you would go to my advanced accounting course. But I don't want to complicate it for you because on the exam, they don't you don't have to worry about those type of details. In your advanced accounting course, you might have to. The gain is 95000 how did we compute the gain? Well, the machine, we sold the machine. A sold the machine for 720,000. The book value is 625. The difference between 720, what you got for the machine, and its book value will give you the amount of the gain. So you need to know how to compute the amount of the gain for the purpose of consolidation as well as the, for the purpose of property, plant, and equipment. Also, the asset and its accumulated depreciation should be adjusted to their original balances in the selling company books on the date of the sale. So when we prepare consolidated financial statement, we have to go back and report the book value, which is cost minus accumulated depreciation as of the, as of the date of the transaction, because we assume that 
we have to nullify basically because the transaction is between A and B. So the easiest way to prepare the eliminating entries is to start by remembering what journal entries do we do by what journal entries do we prepare by both companies at the time of the sale. So simply put, looking at the original entry will help us understand what do we have to do next. Now, before we proceed any further, most likely you are a CPA candidate if you are reviewing this session. And if you are, great, you are looking for some additional help, you have arrived. My website, farhatlectures.com, can be an excellent supplemental tool. I don't replace your CPA review course. Becker, Wiley, Gleam, Roger, whatever you are taking, Miles in India, I don't. I am a useful addition. I can help you understand the material better. I explain it differently. It's, it's a monthly access. If you cannot afford the monthly access, please email me and we can talk about an alternative arrangement. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation, like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on social media. And by the way, I give you access to almost 2,500 practice questions and almost 1,500 of previously released AICPA questions. Please check out my website. So let's take a look at company A, which is the selling company and company A would receive cash of 720,000, which, which happens to be the sub. They will, that's how much they received cash. They need to remove the equipment for a million, remove accumulated depreciation, which is, this is going to give us the book value of 625. Then also they're going to have to credit again. Why? Because they book again, they sold it. Now, when we prepare company A and company B, we cannot have that gain. Company B will debit the machine for 720,000 and they will credit cash. Well, what's the problem here? The machine is overstated when we prepare the consolidated financial statement. The machine is overstated. But here's what we have to do. In addition, company B recorded the depreciation expense given that it continues with the same assumption. Now, what's going to happen is their cost went up. They have five years left. So if we take 720 divided by five, it's going to give us a yearly depreciation of 144 for company B, for company B. Now we have to know how much was company A depreciation because we only have to book company A depreciation in the consolidated, which we, we will come back and revisit this. So you need to understand this is company B depreciation entry on their books. Now, as a result of the consolidation work paper, including two, we, ha we have to include two eliminating journal entries. The first one is to adjust the asset carrying value back to its carrying value on the original seller, which is company A, and eliminate obviously the gain in the second ingest adjust an entry. So let's do that. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to debit the gain. So we have to remove this gain. How do we remove the gain? We debit the gain. We have to debit the machine. 280,000. Why? Because we have to restore the machine to the million dollar. Because notice, it was, if we look, if we look at it from a T account perspective, if this is the machine, we had a million dollar in the cost, then we, then we, uh, we credited the machine a million, we credited the machine a million, and we debited the machine 720. We need to go back and put the machine back to a million. Therefore, we have to debit the machine 280,000. So we debit the machine 280,000. Let me do this one more time. Okay, if this is the machine account, and what we did is we credited the machine a million, which is to remove the machine, the old machine, and we debited the machine for company B720. Well, that's gonna give us a credit of 280. So we need to remove this credit to go back to the original cost. Therefore, we debit the machine 280. Also, we have to restore the accumulated depreciation that we removed because when we sold the machine, we get rid of the machine, we get rid of its accumulated depreciation. Now we have to go back and restore the, the accumulated depreciation, which will take a credit. So this is to restore the machine, basically, to restore the machine to, orig to its original book value this is the original book value or the original carrying value and eliminate the gain. We did this. Also, we have to book the difference in depreciation expense. Now, how do we do that? Now, remember, the depreciation expense for the original company was 125000 
per year for the original company, which is company A. The depreciation expense for company B was 144000 Well, guess what? Now our depreciation is overstated by 14000 which is the difference between 144 and 125 which is a million dollars divided by eight years. Well, what do we have to do? We have to reverse, back out, reverse. Credit, depreciation expense, 19000 Debit, accumulated depreciation, 19000 This is also for the consolidation purposes. So our depreciation expense is not overstated and our accumulated depreciation is properly stated. Now, this is what we have to do in the eliminating years. What do we have to do in future, in subsequent years? So that's very important. It's important to note that unrealized gain or loss on the intercompany sale of the machine is allocated over the machine's remaining useful life. So what's going to happen? We're going to chip away that gain or loss for that matter. In subsequent year, the first eliminating journal entry would be the following. Here's what we have to do. We have to debit retained earnings 76. Let me show you the entry. Debit the machine 280 and credit accumulated depreciation. So after the first year, what's going to happen is this. If you remember, what we did is we booked we booked an additional, we had to remove an additional depreciation of 19,000 by debiting accumulated depreciation and credited depreciation expense. What that did is basically started to account for part of the gain. Now we accounted for 19,000 of the gain. So the gain was, the original gain was 95,000. A year later, we are chipping away at the depreciation expense. And as we chip away from the, de as we reduce our depreciation expense, our gain goes up. We are recognizing the gain. So this is basically here. What we did is as we depreciate accumulated depreciation and credit depreciation expense, technically, yes, we are fixing the depreciation, but we are also starting to recognize the gain. You remember what I told you earlier. Let me go back and show you what I told you earlier. And I told you, I will, I will explain this when we work an example is, is we are going to, we are going to chip away, not chip away. We're going to account for the gain. Let me just show you. Any gain or loss from this temporary transaction is eliminated. In fact, it's considered to be realized from the use of the asset, which reflected in the yearly depreciation. So now what we did is, as we are reducing our depreciation expense per year, as we are doing that, we are realizing that gain. So when, by the time we get to year two, the subsequent year, the gain is no longer 95000 why? Because we already reduced our depreciation expense by 19, and that's going to keep us 76. And the following year, we'll do the same thing. So as we debit retained earnings, because we can no longer debit gain, gain is gone because gain is a temporary account, we're going to, in future years, we debit retained earnings, and we reduce the amount by accumulated depreciation, and we still have to go back and debit the machine for 280, as we did in the original year. Then we have to do one more entry, and that is what to do what? To chip away the depreciation expense. So next year, it will be 76 minus 19 will be debit retained earning, and this will be minus 19 for accumulated depreciation. Now again, I'm not going to say this is a difficult topic, but I'm not going to say it's an easy topic. This is a review. If you feel like this is, um, I went a little bit too fast, that's fine. That's why I have an advanced accounting course that you can look at this much, much more in details. Actually, in my advanced accounting course, I go to three years, okay, which is it's not really required for the CPA exam. But if you need it, if you want to have a good understanding, why not? Other, you can find this on Four Hat Lectures. And on Four Hat Lectures, you can work MCQs, look at additional exercises, study hard. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck. And of course, stay safe.